The V12? Yeah, um, let's just say I didn't think they could pull it off. What do you mean, pull it off? You know, like, create an enthusiast level wheel that actually can hold its own against a competition. And, look, I think a lot of people are gonna be satisfied with the performance they get out of this that doesn't sacrifice safety and quality. Excellent, excellent, always excellent. Let's talk about the specs on the V12. So let's start at the bottom with the battery. So we have 1750 watt hour battery. We also have a 2500 watt motor. We have an advertised top speed of 43 miles an hour or 70 kph and a range which, eh, let's forget their range, it's kind of silly. I'd say it's probably gets you comfortably a 50 to 60 mile range. These specs are not amazing, but they are on par with other 16s of the past. But once again, this wheel is 100 volt, which is a first for in motion. And with all this power, a lot of responsibility. You should really wear a helmet! Wow, okay, braking could be better. Woo! <laughs> I got the, uh, the old tears in the eyes. But man, is this thing powerful and just pretty zippy. I mean, it's a 16 inch tire. You know, for a long time, a lot of us have said, a lot of us more aggressive enthusiast riders have said, you know, if In Motion or King Song, with their quality and their pizzazz, if they were to get into the enthusiast level, high speed game, we would switch over in a second. We were always just waiting for that era to begin. But now it is here, and I'm willing to wager that this wheel is a Nikola killer. But let's find out. <laughs> All right guys, we are here at the hill here in Brooklyn and Dumbo where I like to do all my acceleration uphill tests. I have done the MSP here, I have done the EX here, and today we're gonna do a head-to-head -head challenge with the V12 and the Gotway Nikola Plus. So both of these are pretty comparable wheels, obviously, both 16 inch by three tires, but the Nikola has a 2200 watt motor and the V12 has a 2500 watt motor. So let's see if the V12 can beat the Gotway Nikola, but again, we're talking in motion versus Gotway, so it's really gonna be a challenge, I think, to get this in motion to beat the Gotway, but we'll find out. This video is sponsored by eWheels.com here in North America and eRides.com in the UK and Europe. So if you'd like to make the purchase of an electric vehicle of any kind, find the respective links down below in the description and uh, support this channel. All right, let's get back to the video. All right guys, so that was an exciting finish. It was really cool. I, I actually didn't quite have a real judgment in my head about who I thought would win this. 
But in the end, as you've just seen, the average of them um, puts the in motion ahead by three quarters of a second, which in my head is completely negligible. We'll just call it an even tie. You know, this is an F1 racing and it's not an exact science. For what it's worth, I came up the hill at 37 miles an hour on the V12. I looked down the screen and confirmed. So that's impressive considering everything we know about uh, this whole test here. But I do need to mention one thing, and that is that with the Gotway, um, the motor feels great. With the in motion, it feels great going up the hill. I've got some really good uh, power behind it. I did not feel wanting at all from either of them. But on the in motion, as you would expect, uh, there is tilt back. So on uh, yeah, two of those three runs at points, I was just slowly falling into the tilt back. But again, 37 miles an hour up a hill, just tapping the tilt back. It's impressive, uh, but you know, it's there. So if that bothers you, just something to consider. So this has been the uh, uphill acceleration test. Let's move on to the next thing. So the secret I want to share with you guys is this. So for the longest time, little backstory here, I was going back and forth with in motion about how high the pedal should be. You know, they've kept it pretty high, and that's gonna be really great if you're a technical rider or off-road rider or somebody who just likes to be up a little higher, I guess. But I was like, I love the height, don't get me wrong, but I think that at such high rates of speed, like 70 kph, man, 43 miles an hour, I feel like you need to be a bit lower. You need the center of gravity a bit lower so you can really be stable. And we went back and forth on this for a long time. I spoke to my buddy Law out in Vegas, and he agreed with InMotion <laughs> that we need the higher pedal hangers. And look, I just kind of said InMotion, I, I really feel strongly that we need some way to lower these, even if it's a little bit. I was like, is there not a way we can give people both options? Is there not a way we can have something adjustable? So I pulled up some sketches I had recently done for the veteran Sherman. So I was considering some sort of adjustable situation and I have here, I guess what you would call X hangers, and I slid it over top of the V12's image, and it seemed to look like they would work out pretty well with all the extra space we have down here. And I guess after some discussion with their engineers um, and working out the kinks of what it would look like, well, lo and behold, a few weeks later, I get a little WeChat message that, dear Mickey, we now have adjustable pedal hangers. And then I got a package in the mail with a new prototype, which had this awesome sauce. If you look closely here, you can see that there's like these little registers. You can only see two of them right now because it's in the top register. But we have one, two, three registers for the adjustment of your pedal. So if you are somebody who wants a low, uh, more stable ride for high speed cruising, I would say drop it right down into this one. If you're <laughs> uncertain and you don't know if you need low or high, obviously go for the middle. And if you're somebody who's doing a lot of uh, technical riding or you just really like that high pedal feel and you need a lot of clearance because you're a deep carver, go with the top one here. And the way it comes off is this, it's so crazy. So we've got these four steel screws right in there. So basically you take those hex screws, you take them out and you move it to the correct register and then you screw them back in and you're good to go. Um, this is going to be so revolutionary for guys who want a lot more versatility out of their wheel. So for me, I like to ride a lot of cruising, so I'm gonna keep it pretty low most of the time. But for polo days, like on Sundays when we play polo, I'm gonna raise that all the way up and have that deep carving ability. So aside from the LCD screen, which you've probably seen and we'll get into in a second here, that is my most favorite feature that we have on this thing. It gives you so much versatility as a rider. So whoever you are, you don't have to choose, like do I buy a wheel that has a lot of pedal clearance or buy a wheel that has less and you know, it, it, it's all there for you. So let's see just how agile this wheel is and just see what kind of carves we can accomplish with something as high as this and the adjustability that we have. And I know everything I touch burns right down the dust Cause I'm reckless, yeah I'm reckless And I always seem to fall on the wrong side of the law Cause I'm reckless So one of the more interesting things you might have noticed is the drone sound that this wheel makes when you're riding down the street, especially at higher speeds. So kind of like this. Hopefully you can hear that. Um, this is a pumped sound that is pumped in through the speakers on this thing. And you know, 
I know that a lot of you are gonna love this, like myself, but some of you probably aren't, so good news is you can turn that off if you're not into it. And one other interesting thing that you might find a little offensive at first, but trust me, it's not that bad, is at top speed, obviously this thing goes like 43 miles an hour, there is tilt back, and it does start a bit earlier, but if you've ever ridden a King Song type wheel in the past, you know you can kind of ride up inside that. This wheel does have a serious tilt back, but it is not scary, it is so gentle, it is so light. I actually found it to be very comforting at the top end to know that I can hit that tilt back and it's not gonna hit me and knock me off. It just kind of cradles you right into it. So this is something very useful, and to be honest, it's much better than trying to listen for the beeps when you're in cutout tunnel or wherever you're riding. If you guys don't know what that is, come to New York City, we'll show you cutout tunnel. It's a lot of fun. There's one thing InMotion has been known for, and that's their amenities, or as I like to call it, the safety and fancy stuff. Kickstand, check. Lift sensor, check. Trolley handle, check. Right now, it stops a little too high. I think it should be about 30 degrees. Somewhere where I was holding it before, but we'll see what happens in final production, but I think they should be able to fix this by then just a matter of where the mechanism is. But for now, I like to just hold it a little bit loose and it works just fine for me. So this is their side pad situation. I don't love them. I fought pretty hard to ask them to remove them. I thought it should be flush right here, but there's a bit of design behind it. It doesn't matter anyways, because I like to use my own side pads. I like to use the Clark V2s right here. I think it works really well on this wheel. But in general, these are right here. And they'll be a bit beefier, I'm told, for the final. But basically, it's a latch here. And it just sort of pops up. If I can do it on camera here. Okay, and this comes off. The reason for this is so you can get into the side panel here. There's a bit of screws hidden away here. So it's a bit of a design thing. You know, they are what they are. It's nice, it's integrated, but it's not gonna give you a lot of leverage. These are the RGB lights. As you can see here, despite my Velcro, there's a circular function here, and same on the other side, and you've got two straightaways in the front and the back. A lot of people have been asking, is there a brake light? Of course there's a brake light. CA turns red. The other cool thing is any of the colors on here can be adjusted and changed. Any of the diodes of the RGB lights here can be adjusted to whatever you want. You can really customize it here in the app. It's really fantastic, and anybody who loves RGB is gonna be into this. But if you hate RGB, just turn it off, and then it's all black. And zooming around to the back here, we have the flap that goes right into the charge ports. So opening this up, we can see we have USB-A, USB-C, and a tiny five pin. But don't worry, this tiny five pin is just for prototype purposes. I am told on the final, we will have the five pin we're all used to on the Gotway and Veteran wheels. So that's very exciting to have a bit of a universal port between the few of them. Um, USB-A, self-explanatory, you can charge your devices. And this USB-C is really great because it's also fast charging. To what wattage, I'm not exactly sure. So consult the manual on that. But it's really so awesome to have a fast charge port on an electric unicycle. So this has been the charge port. And uh, yeah, the flap is okay. It's not bad. Don't forget, the last thing on this list is the touch screen. This is last but not least. In fact, it's probably most important. This touchscreen is amazing, and I don't know why we've never had this before. So we've got a whole video on this touchscreen. Find my Customization King video, and you'll find more on it. Let's take a look really quick. So you swipe over, you got more data right here. Press and hold, even more data. Go back to your home screen. If you press and, oh, home screen here. If you press and hold one of these, you can change any of these options. It's really great. I love it. Press here. Then you get to all the cool stuff, all the everything about this wheel that's making it all personal to you, all right here. This is the touch screen. So if you're looking for a deeper dive into all these amenities that the V12 has to offer, I made an entire video that's linked down below, and you can check out all the different functionality, all the customization this wheel has to offer. I mean, this is one of the things that sets this wheel apart, is everything about it is pretty much customizable. And that's something we haven't seen ever before on an electric unicycle. I mean, one of the things too, just to quickly note it, I mean, go to that video to see more about it, but we've now been introduced to what I call split ride modes. So instead of just having like hard, medium, soft, like you might be used to, you can split that between acceleration and braking. So you can tailor it in with a dial, just how crazy or not crazy you want your hardness level or vice versa softness level. There's a lot going on here that you really should check out. So I'll link that video down below. So really quick, I wanna give a big shout out to the sponsors of this video and the rest in this series, and that would be eWheels.com in North America and eRides.com in the UK and Europe. If you're looking to buy the V12, please find the links down below or any electric vehicle, go find the links and make a purchase.
All right, that's enough talking. Now let's ride. Unbreakable. Look, overall, I really do like this wheel. I do think there's a potential that I might grow out of it in the future. Who knows? Don't hold me to it, but as of now, I really enjoy it and see a huge need for it to sort of replace my Nikola. But it's really great because there's a lot of versatility. It can be a super chill cruising commuter rider, but it can also be a really sort of aggressive mobbing around town in your neck of the woods rider. So here's what I don't love. The motor, the top heaviness, and the side pad situation. You know, let's start with the motor. The motor's a 2500 watt motor, but it kind of doesn't feel like it. And I don't know if that's just the manufacturer they went with, but I feel like it can be overpowered in certain scenarios. Okay, time for some real talk. As for the recording of this video, I have not successfully hit 70 kilometers an hour, AKA 43 and change miles per hour. Let me dive into this. So it's not clear to me if it's a motor problem, the manufacturer, or is it, you know, that just the motor can't handle it or what the issue is, or is it in motion, just unready to go that far, giving us an actual 70 kilometers an hour. I'm not sure, but basically what happens is around 65, 66, 67, somewhere in the above 65, you get the tilt back going till you get to 70. So like I said, at 68 or so where I've been hitting is my top end, you're in severe tilt back at that point to where pushing beyond that just feels unsafe, unstable, a little scary to be honest. For somebody who's looking to, you know, cruise at that speed, you, you can't. I mean, <laughs> who wants to cruise with their feet tilted back like this? It's just not, it's not possible. I mean, of course it's possible. It's just, it's not preferable. So I'm not sure if it's just, they're holding on to an old guard, trying to have some sort of safety measure they believe is, I don't know. I mean, look, the lift speed is 105 kilometers an hour. That's like more than the RS. So I don't really understand like, what's happening here. And of course, all this could change. It's kind of firmware related, I think. Unless, like I said, it's like a motor thing. They're just not disclosing. They know it's not powerful enough or something like that. But I just want to be on the you know same footing with everybody and let you know this is, this is a real thing that bothers me. I've been going back and forth with emotion on this for a couple of weeks now, especially leading up to this final launch here. And it's just something that I'm not satisfactory on. Now to compare it to the Nikola, my Nikola Plus, you know, I can do 40 miles an hour. I can tap it. I can hold it for like maybe a mile, but I'm not holding 40, 41, 42, or at least, never 43. 43 is a cutout on the Nikola, for me at least. I weigh like 175. I'm, I'm not pushing a Nikola like that, you know, like so comfortably a Nikola wheel in a city like New York or wherever, like you can hold 38 for a good while. This wheel can do that because like I said, you can hold 40 on this wheel. So if you're someone looking for something that is completely just a few miles per hour upgrade to your Nikola and you were like, yes, finally, three more miles per hour. I don't think this is the wheel for you. But if you're someone who's looking at the overall aspects of this unicycle and you're like, wow, this is definitely an upgrade for my Nikola or, or whatever you're on before, or maybe it's your first wheel purchase and you don't really care about that top speed, then this is a great wheel choice for you. But for you sticklers for speed, I just wanted to be on the up and up with you and let you know what's been going on behind the scenes. I really tried guys. I tried to push this thing to 70 for them. Like I said, it's just, you can tap 70. It's possible, but it's just so much effort. You know, it's not worth it. It's, it doesn't ride like a gotway where it's kind of like, feels like infinite power till you die. <laughs> they are doing some sort of speed uh, acceleration curve magic here that is really making it more difficult the more you get up in that curve. So, you know, for what it's worth, this is where it is. Hopefully it's useful to you guys. 
Anyways, it is what it is, so back to the video. For the regular, like 99% of people, it'll be just fine. But if you're looking for ultimate 2500 watt motor capacity for what we in the past have thought of, there's a bit of lacking. You know, I did my test against the Nikola up the hill and it was like on par. I mean, that's it's a bit weird at first when you think about it, 2500 watts versus 2000 and they're just like, basically neck and neck, slightly ahead. So, you know, that's a thing that doesn't excite me. So the other little thing that I don't love, or I guess it's like a love-hate thing, is like they've done a lot of things for safety and they have waterproof ratings, like things that we don't see on other, you know, enthusiast level wheels. They have given it a lot of safety, quality, but the expense that comes at that is the over-engineering. To get inside this wheel is a pain in the butt. If you haven't seen that video, I do a whole video where I open it up and show you the design and why it is a really great design on the outside. I love the brutish look and everything, but internally it's super safe and there's cable management. It's not just, you know, whatever shoved into a suitcase and hope it sticks kind of thing. But like I said, the, the downfall to that, to get in there and like do some work on it is like kind of a chore. <laughs> It's not as bad as the V11. The other thing is the pads. Obviously, I wish they didn't have any pads on that side of that thing. They could still keep that little side panel on there, but yeah, it, it kind of gets in my way. Maybe that's nitpicking, but not a huge fan of that. It's a 16 inch wheel, so it does a lot of things really good, but nothing great. But with that being said, it's a hell of a lot of fun. I've rode with some serious riders in the city with this already, and it's kept up very well. If that means anything to you guys, take it for what it is. This is a very fun wheel that can keep up in a New York City setting. So to wrap it all up in a nice bow, fantastic wheel, 100 volt, 16 inches, Nikola killer, very, very fun wheel. I recommend any and all of you who don't have an aversion to 16 inch wheels, get rid of your other ones and buy this one. And also, if you're looking for more V12 content, I have seven more videos on the subject, so find my playlist here on my channel and just go crazy. But that wraps it up for now. I'll see you on the next one. Keep riding, never stop. That was a lot of videos. Lot, lot of videos made. Very lot of videos. I think I'm taking a break for a while. Yeah, a bit of a break until the next wheel comes. The King Song wheel, the 100 volt, probably. Hey Google, convert 80 kilometers to miles. 80 kilometers is 49.71 miles. Maybe they'll do 49 miles an hour. Maybe the new King Song will be 49 miles an hour.